Hi, I teach uh, English at a junior and senior high school in Japan and at my school we have four native English teachers and about 10 or 12 Japanese English teachers. We have new employees from time to time, so when we get a new native English teacher, they could be a regular teacher where they teach their classes alone, or they could be an ALT where they teach their classes together with another teacher. And in either case, you know, you have a new employee and there's various expectations that we have for how the person will develop over the course of their employment. Whenever you start a new job, there's a lot of new things going on and uh, your coworkers know that. And we all expect that your first year, you're just trying to figure out what's going on. There's a lot of school events and there's a lot of classes. And even if you have work experience in Japan, whenever you change to a different school, things are done a little differently and you got to figure out what they are. And then in your second year, and especially in your third and fourth year, then people will just assume that you do know what's going on for the most part because you've already gone through it before, right? Every school in Japan has a calendar on the wall that has the events for the current month and the upcoming month, and it's all written there, and it's your job to figure out what it says. And if you can't read it, then you need to learn how to read it by uh, using your dictionary, uh, maybe using your phone to take some pictures, and then getting on the internet and looking them up, seeing what everything means. Or maybe you have to go ask someone for more information. So then if you're going to talk to people to get more information, you want to know who to talk to. Now, a person who's new to Japan, who doesn't speak much Japanese, is probably going to want to talk to the other native English teachers and that's fine, but you don't want to do that too much because sometimes we don't have the information you need. For example, suppose you want to know information about a seventh grade event and you ask me. If I don't teach seventh grade, I might not have that information. And I can go ask another teacher and then I can tell you what they said and translate it to English. And that's okay. But if we do that a lot, some problems are going to creep up. The first thing is it's slow because instead of one conversation between two people, it's either one conversation between three people or three conversations. And then the other thing is that I might get it wrong. What if I misremember? Or what if I make a mistake translating and I tell you the wrong thing? Then you might show up at the wrong place at the wrong time and that would be a problem for you and you might be really embarrassed and then that might cause a little bit of trouble and it's entirely all my fault, totally my fault. But at the same time, it wasn't my event and I really had nothing to do with it. And then of course you would be upset with me and I would be upset with myself and you know, nobody wants that. Which means you want to try to ask the person who knows the information that you need directly if you can. And then that means you need to study Japanese because they might not speak English. So you should study Japanese every day. For something like reading and writing, you can do it uh, at your desk, pen and paper, or using a computer or whatever textbook you have. Um, 30 minutes a day is a good amount of time or more if you're particularly motivated. There's no problem with studying Japanese at school. Uh, the, your coworkers will be totally supportive of it. And then you want to make small talk with the teachers around you so you can practice your uh, listening and your speaking abilities. You know, the teachers have their own jobs to do, but if they're taking a break and you chat with them for two or three minutes, they'll be more than happy to talk to you. You can get to know them, you can make friends, and it'll all help you develop your Japanese skills too. As an English teacher, we have to do our lesson planning and then we have to create events. For lesson planning, when you start off as an assistant teacher, you often are given about 10 minutes or 15 minutes of a class. The lead teacher will say, make an activity dealing with such and such material, and then you make an activity. And then you go to class and you teach it. You have to prepare the activity. What are you going to do? What are the students going to do? If there's a worksheet, you need to make a worksheet. You need to make enough photocopies of the worksheet for the students in the class, so you're going to have to find out how many students that is. If you're using a PowerPoint, then you need to make the PowerPoint. If you're bringing a computer to the classroom, you need to make sure that there's a TV or a projector. And if, there's, if it's a projector, you might need to bring the projector with you. And you have to make sure you have the right cable to connect to the TV or the projector. If you need internet, you need to make sure there's internet in the classroom, and if there's not, then you have to make a plan. 
And that's just the normal way that you go about making sure that you're there logistically. At our school, uh, the native English speakers organize several events during the year. For example, we have a Halloween party. And typically what we do is the teachers who are organizing will meet a couple weeks before the party. We have a general plan and then we'll divide up the work and tell each teacher which activities they should prepare. And then everyone will go away and during the next week or two in your free time you prepare your own activities and then we meet again a few days before or the day before the party and we check and make sure everyone has all of their stuff ready to go. If it's a party that only happens once a year it's kind of like a lesson in that you're still preparing activities except there are probably longer or more detailed activities to prepare and you only have one chance to do them so you really want to get it right the first time. Sometimes a teacher will join our school and the teacher won't really work very hard to study Japanese because they can ask questions to me or to the other native English teachers or possibly to the other Japanese English teachers. But in the long run, that ends up being really a sad thing. Uh, first, because if you're coming all the way to Japan, you know, I really hope that you can learn Japanese. And then second, because you're not going to become a member of the teacher community if you're only talking to a few English teachers. Many people come to Japan and they work as an assistant teacher for several years, and then they return to the United States and they do something totally different that doesn't involve education. There's no problem with that. If that's what you're doing, good for you. That might mean that you're not going to work as hard to be a great teacher because you're not planning on being a teacher in the future, and that's legitimate, and everyone, of course, understands that. But when you're working as an assistant teacher, there are some skills that you should still develop. Uh, event planning is a very important skill that you can use all over the place. Uh, learning how to work well with your co-workers is very valuable and then there's a lot of technology that we use in the classroom and preparing for classes. If you can get your computer skills up that's something that you can take with you and it's very marketable. So if you're here for the short term, only a couple years, definitely try to maximize those skills and then if you're thinking about teaching or if you're not sure what your long-term career goals are then you also want to try to uh, learn from the English teachers around you about how we can teach foreign language well and what sorts of things a teacher does to be more effective in the classroom.